Hello everyone, you're watching the, another episode of Uzbek Tales and as usual I'm your host Begeli Boy Matov. Guys, here we are, another museum for you guys. I'm here in the... It's written here Amali Sanat Muse Applied Arts Museum in the center of Tashkent guys. So let's go here. I called them, they told me that there will be professional guide for me and here we are hey hello hello, hello. this is the welcome first to our museum uh -huh. of applied art mm -hmm. so i'm a professional guide of this museum and my name is zilia zilia uh -huh. so nice to meet you. Uh, we are open uh, actually every day uh -huh. uh, from nine in the morning till uh, six in the afternoon okay. and we have uh, the excursions in different languages like english spanish French, uh -huh. Russian, and Uzbek. Good, good. Yes, and there is a and ticket. And the prices, uh -huh. yeah, ticket price is 25,000 mm -hmm. per person. Uh, it's an entrance fee, and uh, if you like to have a uh, professional yes. guiding, guide, it yes. will be also 25,000 yes. soon. Yes, this is in the local currency. Local yes. currency soon, yes. right. Okay. So, so you're you... welcome to our museum. Uh -huh. So, as you see, we have a courtyard. Yes. In this courtyard, uh -huh. uh, very often, yeah. we have some different. We organize some different events. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good. For example, uh, uh, the museum day, which is on 18th of yeah. May, or uh, uh -huh. the 1st of June, which is International Day of yeah. um, Children and uh, some others different yeah. folklore shows i heard yes uh, yeah. folk shows yes. yeah in navruz holiday we got yeah. sumalak also mm -hmm. you know and uh, there was a fair yeah. of our craftsmen uh -huh. so the people could buy uh, a traditional souvenirs also yeah yeah, yeah. and in front of uh -huh. you in this the middle one? you yeah. can see the house which mm -hmm. is the old house uh, constructed in 70s of 19th uh -huh. century and so it belonged to uh, a rich uh, Russian uh, merchant, merchant, which later was bought by uh -huh. Russian uh, diplomat Alexander Polovtsev. Oh, okay. And it was all decorated in Uzbek traditional style by his order, because okay. he liked it. Yeah. On your left, you can see this one, um, right. Uh, the ah, tree. I tree. Mean, the tree. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, is, guys, uh, <laughs> this the is the one. Tree, yeah. Oak tree, which is uh -huh. 140 years old because, as you yep, see, it was planted yep, in yep. 1818. Wow, guys, just so look at this. So, it's also a historical monument. Whoa, yeah. This tree has a lot to say. Yes. Yeah, if it could if it speak. could speak, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It could, uh, it could, uh, could tell you yeah. more than me. Okay, guys, now. We'll okay, now we'll we go. are starting our uh -huh. excursion around the museum. Okay, let's go. Let's see what is inside. Please, this is the first room. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. Otherwise, let's go to the next room. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this room you can see uh, embroideries, wow. handmade embroideries, uh -huh. they are called Suzanne, uh -huh. uh, which is a Persian uh, word, it uh -huh. means made by needle. Needle, yes. And uh, all of them are different by their colors and design, uh, because they were made in different regions of Uzbekistan. Yes. And this one, for example, is very interesting, you know, yeah. uh, you can see here, um, some birds, yeah, some, birds, some yes. birds, but the birds they don't have eyes because it was made wow. like uh -huh. symbolical, uh -huh. uh, symbolical um, because at that time after the 8th century, starting yeah. with Islam, it was prohibited to depict the human beings and the animals. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's this why they don't have uh, uh, yeah. eyes. This is the and this the, the main uh -huh. design, the uh -huh. main design on there. Uh, embroideries and the carpets uh -huh. were uh, so floral design yes. and geometrical, geometrical figures. figures yes. Like this, I think. Yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, like ones. this, which is the Suzanne uh, from Tashkent. Yeah. 
uh, mainly you can see here circles, circles and the yeah. circle stands for sun. Sun, and the sun yeah. was one of the uh, Zoroastrian symbols. So one of the, uh, the, the Zoroastra religion, which was yeah. the main religion uh, in the um, pre-Islamic period yes. before the 8th century. So religion has, uh, you know, uh, always had the relation or the power for the making of this carpets, for this art, you know, this one and this one, this one had a, you know, Zoroastric, you know, like a uh, relation, that one is Islamic relation. So let's, let's see this one. Uh, this one is from Shah Rizab or Kashkadarya wow. region. And uh, the difficulty of uh, this work is that it has uh, a lot of small and even tiny details. Yeah, yeah. Yes, really. Okay, let's go to the first. Uh, let's go to the room of Ikat. Room. Room. Yeah. The uh, Uzbeks, uh, they used to uh, weave different fabrics mm -hmm. since the ancient times. Here you can see uh, Ikat. Ikat design. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, um, known as Ikat in Europe. Here in Uzbekistan, it's called Aberband. Yes. Aberband into English we also can uh, translate as uh, tie dye. Oh, okay. Tie dye because Aberband is a special technique of uh -huh. uh, dyeing the threads. Wow. So on such a loom, so... they used to uh -huh. weave uh, all these kind of the Ikats. Yep. This is the how they make it yes see guys wow uh, usually it's a narrow loom uh, that's why the width of uh, fabric mm -hmm. could be maximum 50 mm -hmm. centimeters 50 centimeters yeah okay guys let's go to another room what we've got here here a lot of tourists are visiting here so we don't want to disturb them also okay here. All these embroideries, they are machine made because uh, in the end of 19th century they started to import the uh, embroider, uh, embroider machines. I, uh, I think from the German it was famous Zinger company Zinger, machines. Yes, Zinger uh, yes, machine. yes. Right, you are. Yeah, thank you very much Germans. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, and our machine work it was uh, uh, quicker, yeah. yeah, quicker and uh, maybe easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why uh, some ladies they started to make uh, embroideries yeah. uh, by order or for sale yes. for market. Yes. And here you can see them. Uh -huh. And also the, uh, the fabric is not narrow fabric like we saw in the beginning of the museum. Mm -hmm. It's uh, of one big wood yeah. because it's a uh, factory made fabric yes. okay let's go to other other room yes Whoa. so then we'll come back to another room which we yeah. left so this room is a carpet and musical instrument okay guys. um so talking about the carpets you know they were several different uh tribes uh -huh. living on the territory of modern Uzbekistan yes. and uh, they weave the carpets they, they had uh, each tribe had uh, their own design or mm -hmm. even more than one design yeah. for example on this carpet this uh, you can see one of the ancient designs which is called NC mm -hmm. uh, and the carpet with this kind of, of uh, um, design was used as a door in the yurt yes the yes, yurt yes. where uh, which was the house of the, yes. um, some tribes, yeah. Yes. And uh, here you can see silk, 100% silk carpet, uh -huh. yeah, which is uh, new and modern. Yeah. Because in the past, our people they weaved the carpets of wool. Uh, it they could be uh, mm -hmm. sheep wool or camel wool. Camel wool, yeah. yeah. And the okay. first carpets uh, the Uzbeks started to make, they were long hair carpets and they're called yeah, Jews, here's this, like this. this one, Later, yes, uh, yeah. short hair carpets, Gilam, yeah, uh -huh, and yeah. uh, more later, uh -huh. um, the plain carpet, which is called Palas, Palas, yes. Palas without any hair. Uh -huh. 
Uh, so in, in comparison to Uzbek people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Turkmen and um, Arabs, mm -hmm. uh, they made, uh, they weave the carpets for sale. Yeah. And a lot of them they, they brought to Bukhara. And yes. Bukhara, it was a big trading mm -hmm. center on a great silk route. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people used to buy the carpets from Bukhara. Yes. That's why then, uh, for example, this very yes. ancient mm -hmm. uh, teke design, yeah. which is typical Turkmen design, uh -huh. became uh, to be called uh, Bukharan design, design because a lot of people yes. used to buy in Bukhara. Yes, right, very easy. right now we are saying that uh, uh, it's made for Dubai, you know, even though Dubai doesn't make any anything, but uh, Dubai become now modern Bukhara, you know, so everybody brings their goods to the Dubai, then from the Dubai it's huge market, it goes to a different type of the world. So Bukhara was also some, you know, some sort of Dubai on that time. Okay, what about this? Uh, this yeah, is... This, is, uh, this is called Tapchan, uh -huh. it's kind of the uh, big uh, wooden bat, yeah. uh, made by a horizon Mm -hmm. a craftsman from the oak tree which they usually use mm -hmm. so and uh, we use uh, this kind of bed to sit or sometimes to sleep but sleep. usually they put it in in the open air in yeah. the courtyard in the garden yes. of the houses so usually they put in the middle a low table which is traditional yes. uh, yes. and then yes. all around the Hontahta they put this okay. traditional this Uzbek car yes. uh, kind of mattresses yeah. Kurpacha. Kurpacha. and then the whole family can sit around this table and uh, having dinner having or yes. having tea yeah, yes they can even receive the guests here yes. on this top channel F family meetings was held always here you know and now it's also become uh, one of the Uzbek brands um, some of the uh, hotels some of the restaurants cafes uh, they have now also top channel not the, just houses so this is one of the brands. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about Here this musical? Here you can musical? see the musical instrument, uh -huh. Uzbek and Central Asian Uzbek uh -huh. uh, musical instruments. Uh, the most uh, ancient musical uh -huh. instrument for Uzbeks is a uh, uh, flute, flute, which is called Nai. Yes. And this one is decorated uh, with a mother of pearl, which they yeah. used to bring from India. Yes. Because we don't have any sea around us, yes. we're too far from the uh, yeah. sea. And here you can see very long musical yes. instrument, which is called karnai, karnai, which means the flute for deaf. Wow, interesting. A deaf person, yeah. <laughs> why, and why? In the past, it's... first, uh -huh. because it sounds very loudly. It's very loudly. It sounds very loudly. One can hear it from the uh, even even deaf big people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a big uh, distance yeah. and uh, they used to play it uh, first, uh -huh. special people used to play it uh, uh -huh. when they wanted to uh, to announce something, yes. to make an announcement yeah. to attract the attention of the people and then they announce some uh, news or yes. some lore of the Khan for yeah, example, yeah. later they started to use it uh, also on weddings and yeah. up to nowadays they played on yes, weddings guys up to now we are using this at the, at the wedding but before there was no internet there was no newspaper there was nothing so Not radio, they, no, yeah, wifi. no radio wi-fi so they took this one and they went to the mostly in the bazaar mostly in the market you know so they came here and they uh, just play this one it was it has a little bit of a scary voice sometimes so sound so people gather together so after that there was an announcement yes okay guys let's see what we've got there in this room uh, uh -huh. you can see uh, some uh, yes heads traditional heads they are uh, called to be taken yeah and uh, they're also from different regions in the past and people uh, or more to be takers mm. or and uh, hats, uh, one could uh, understand, one mm -hmm. could see from which region was a person yes. by the hat because these four hats they are from Kashkadaria region or mm. 
Shahri Sab. Yeah. Black and white, they came from Chus. Yes, so nice. Fergana Valley, first they came to Tashkent after 1920, but then they were spread yes. to the rest of the region. Nowadays, they are uh, mm -hmm. the most uh, popular one. Mm -hmm. And uh, these yes. are very bright, with a very yeah. bright embroidery. They are from Surhandaria region, which is the south of Uzbekistan. Okay. Um, this one, uh, which is presented by the embroidery on yeah. the velvet, Mm -hmm. uh, material is from Andijan yes. and the last one also from Andijan. Mm -hmm. And over there you can see um, the hats, the traditional hats for women. For women yes. They are more colorful, they, they are more bright and they have uh, embroidery with uh, uh, the birds, you mm -hmm. see, and a lot of flowers. Yes. And this kind of um, design, it's called uh, in Tajik or Persian language, is called chor, um, chorgul, chorgul, chorgul yes. which means four flowers. flowers yes. Okay, well, I think uh, this is the yeah, one. Yeah, this is yeah. an interesting thing, which is called paranji. Yeah. And uh, the women, until 1924, mm -hmm. women used to wear it when the, uh, they wanted to go outside to the street. Because only at home they could stay uh, with an open uh, face. Yes. So, uh, it has uh, the black whale, well, uh, mm -hmm. which is made of horse yeah, hair, and it's yeah. very tough. Uh -huh. Yeah, they put it on the uh, face, face, so they uh, closed the face, uh -huh. and then they had to close also their figures, yeah. so they put this kind of the gown on mm. the top, on, the, yeah. on their heads. Yeah. And uh, when they were um, outside on the street, uh -huh. we can say, or you can say they looked the same, yes. but it wouldn't be um, uh, quite right, because uh, uh, by uh, Parangi, mm -hmm. what one could understand a lot of information about this yes, lady, for example, yes. the color of Parangi yeah, color. is uh, darker is the color, the darker is color, uh -huh. the older was the lady. The lady, yes. Yeah, then uh, you can understand, for example, a lady who had this Parangi, she was from the rich family yeah. because it's made of the velvet and all these decoration, uh -huh. embroidery uh, says that uh, she was from the rich family. Also, we could understand if she was uh, um, uh, married or not married because okay. you can see behind yeah. the parangi, you can see very yes. long, narrow, uh, so-called sleeves, sleeves, but uh, yes. they were not used as, a sleeve, yeah. uh, as the sleeves. Yeah. But if they were stitched together like here, uh -huh. it meant that she was married. Uh -huh. If they were separate, uh, that meant that she was uh, single. If she had uh, children, uh -huh. you can see um, um, this um, um, the Lots, kind of decoration yeah, yes, attached yes. Uh, on the edge of the sleeve. Yes. In this case, she had four children. Okay. So you, you mean this was like fake sleeve or just fake sleeve? Fake sleeve. Yeah. Sleeve? Fake sleeve oh, yeah. Okay. Because as she put it on hat, uh -huh. not on the shoulders, uh -huh. she couldn't use them as the sleeves. Oh, yeah. Just nice, like fake. Nice. Okay, guys. Let's go to other other rooms. So about Paranji, see, we got a lot of information actually. A lot of people they doesn't know, but now okay. Yep, we came to the one of the main main buildings of this house. I mean, this is it was a real house actually. It wow. was a real house. So now oh. you are welcome to the house of Alexander Polos, the Alex Russian diplomat who used to live here. Uh, since 1880 uh -huh. till uh, uh, 1904. Okay. Actually, he lived uh, here with his uh, family. Uh -huh. And all the decoration uh, was made by his order, by his desire, because he liked a lot oriental style. Uh -huh. uh, he asked his assistant, Andreev, uh, to do it in uh -huh. his house. And Andreev, in his turn, uh, he invited the craftsmen from different parts of Uzbekistan. Okay. And for example, uh, pay attention to the ceilings. ceilings. Uh, all the ceilings were made by craftsmen from Tashkent. It's a uh, carved uh, wood, uh -huh. and then it was all painted by hand. Uh, then pay attention to the walls. The walls okay. are created with a carved plaster, we call it ganj. A ganj or cup plaster was made by 
craftsmen from uh, Bukhara. And the lower part mm -hmm. of the wall, uh, it was covered with uh, ceramic tiles made by craftsmen or ceramists from Rishtan Fergana Valley. On each wall, you can also see some natures, like yeah. the shelves. Yes. And uh, on one side, it was a decoration of the room. On the other side, it was kind of furniture because uh, uh, before the end of 19th century, Uzbek people didn't have any furniture. And the furniture started to bring the Russians after mm. nine, uh, 1817. Mm, yeah, for, sorry, for Uzbeks, it was already like, you know, built-in furniture. Yeah, built in, in the, furniture. Yeah, yeah. We, use, we used like this. So, Even, and they could, yeah. they could put some yeah, stuff here. Yeah, some stuff. Kurpacha, for example, right? Uh, for Kurpacha, yes. of course, they had uh, the different uh, one, much yeah. bigger, yeah, much, much bigger, bigger niche. Yes, yeah. yes. And these are uh, small kind of yeah. niches. Um, it was uh, for some ceramic and uh -huh. uh, some... Uh, Yes. What, what, Some dishes, what, what yeah. about the top? Uh, on, the... on the top, they had uh, a special niche, mm -hmm. uh, which had always the shape of the arch. It was a special niche for yeah. Quran book. Yes. Uh, in the past, they used to say that every family had to have their Quran yeah. because as it's, it's a holy book. Of course. Uh, it considered as an amulet of the house of the family. Yeah. Yeah, it was their protection, yes. kind of protection. Islamic religion, yes, yeah. it has its power. If you look at the decoration of um, the whole uh -huh. uh -huh. or the room for guests, uh, where we are now, uh -huh. you can see a mixture of uh, Oriental and uh, uh, European uh, culture, culture. Because yeah. you can see here two chimneys, and these chimneys, they are Russian mm, chimneys, yes, but both chimneys, they are decorated in the Uzbek traditional mm, style of yeah. cluster. And one yeah. of the chimneys, it has the as a decoration on the top, yeah. uh, the dome of the mosque, uh -huh. but the other one has the dome of the Russian Orthodox Church. Wow, so coexistence of two different uh, faiths, two different religions in Uzbekistan, yeah, this is the very clear, you know, uh, example of this. Good, good. Yes. So, guys, this is the one. See, a real. It was a real house. Yes. Let's go to another room. Yeah, and the next room is much smaller. Much smaller. Uh, yeah, it's called Kalyan room, but uh -huh. they say nobody smoked Kalyan here. Yeah. It was just a room for rest. Uh -huh. Forest. And yeah. uh, the ceiling of the room also decorated with a, a carved wood and painting. Uh -huh. And the walls are also decorated with carved plaster ganj. But here it looks different in comparison to the first uh, yeah. room in Monkona because it's all painted here and uh, it, it's painted with a gold. Yes. Uh, in a uh, kundal technique. Gold plate, it is. Gold yeah. plate or kundal. Okay. The sure. is called kundal. Also, uh, you can see here some paintings in this room. They were made in 1991, which is written here yep. uh, by our Uzbek artist, uh, miniaturist, yes. um, especially by the order uh, of this museum, Chinti Zahmara. Mm. And on these paintings, you can see mainly the crafts of Uzbekistan, yeah. like uh, embroideries. Uh -huh. So the girls are making Suzanne yes. or ceramic. Ceramics, yes. Ceramics making jars for uh -huh. sale. Uh, or um, uh, fabrics, weave fabrics. fabrics. Yes. You can see he cut again this here. One, yeah. yeah. Yeah, famous cut again here, guys. Okay, guys, let's go to we go to the next room. Next room. This museum is huge, actually. You know, guys, we are going from one room to another. Okay. And uh, here we are in the library. Okay. Uh, this is the former library of Alexander uh -huh. Polovtsev. Polovtsev, what is left here is only the city and the Russian chimney. The Russian Unfortunately, chimney. Uh, the design, the decor of the, uh, the walls uh -huh. uh, is not preserved uh -huh. till nowadays. Yeah, we lost it, this 
Yeah, we lost the decoration of the walls. But uh, nowadays uh, they present the ceramics here from different regions. The first one is a typical ceramic from Samarkand. Mm -hmm. And this unglazed style is yeah. called Afrasiap. Uh, the other ceramic, which is mainly yellow and brown, is from Shahrisabs or Kashkadaria region. Mm -hmm. The other one, which you can see here, is uh, from Gishduvan. Mm -hmm. uh, as Gishduvan is located in Buhara region, sometimes uh, this ceramic is called also Buhara ceramics. Yes. They, they have their own school already, very famous. Yeah, yeah very school, famous yeah. Uh, ceramic school. Yes. Here you can see some more um, ancient objects of ceramic. Uh, because ceramic is a very ancient, the most ancient craft yeah. actually of Uzbek people. Uh, yeah, but uh, as you can see, in the past it was very primitive, very yes. simple, without uh, any color, no glaze, no yeah. any painting, no any design. Yes. But uh, they developed it and by some time mm -hmm. uh, uh, some regional mm -hmm. uh, ceramic schools appeared mm -hmm. and all of them are different, like for example, this ceramic is from Kiva or Khorezm region yes. and they always use three colors like blue, turquoise and white. Yeah. And guys, about the ceramics, we in Uzbek Tales already collaborating with the very famous potter Gaira Juraj from the Bukhara school. So just watch our full episodes and the promo videos about Gaira Juraj in our channel, guys. Yeah, what about this? Uh, so here you can see porcelain, and porcelain in Uzbek language is called Chini because China, it came yes. from China first. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, as in English they call it China. Yeah, yeah but uh, you know, in comparison to ceramics, mm -hmm. uh, porcelain it was something new for Uzbek people, and they try to make of the same quality as cha. Chinese butter, yes. uh, they couldn't, they couldn't for a long time. That's yeah. why the first uh, porcelain factory in Tashkent was opened only in 1953, yes. so late. But uh, all the sets which uh -huh. you see here, they are all made in uh, Tashkent uh -huh. uh, porcelain factory. And now you are looking at the most um, famous design, which yeah. is called Pachta Gul, yes. which means cotton design yeah this is also already like a brand and you can see this kind of tahtagul in everywhere in uzbekistan not just in the you know some dishes porcelain it's almost everywhere in some clothes some furniture everywhere i think in the streets also yeah uh here you can see gold oh. embroidery which is uh -huh. typical for Bukhara and Bukhara region. Wow. And a uh, golden thread in the past, like in the end of 19th century, uh, they used to bring it from or import it from Russia. And the golden thread, thread contained uh, real gold up to 6%. Uh -huh. And uh, golden embroidery was made only by men. Uh -huh. And they used to say to women that golden thread becomes black in the hands of the lady okay nowadays is made only by yes uh, ladies yeah so oh, they took it is. back they took it back everything again yeah. yeah gender equality okay good also also you can see here jewelry yeah uh, jewelry for women from different regions of uzbekistan uh -huh. like karakal pakistan Horezm, yeah. Bukhara, samarkand and the others so uh they used to make jewelry from gold or from silver. They used different kind of stones like coral stone, uh, which they imported from India. The turquoise stones yeah. were from uh, suburbs of Tashkent and the other stones uh -huh. uh, brought from Russia, Iran or Afghanistan. You know, according to the tradition, a man uh, had to present her, uh, his daughter the whole set of jewelry yeah. before her wedding. And it was a part of her dowry also. Yes. And one uh, set uh, of jewelry could weigh up to five, six mm. kilos. Yes, it depends on the status of the family, if they are uh -huh. rich, maybe, maybe more even. <laughs> Yeah, and if he was, uh, the father was rich, yes. he could buy uh, only from gold, of yeah. course. Yeah. Here, uh, here are um, uh, wood carving, uh -huh. wood carving, so now you are looking at the 
uh, old door, yep. uh, which is made by uh, craftsmen from Kiva. And you know, almost all the houses in, in, in the ancient times, they had the doors like this. Yeah. Uh, the difference was that if uh, the family was rich family, they had the decoration or the cutting by both sides, yeah. inside and outside. If the family was um, not very rich, uh -huh. the decoration was only outside. Only outside. Yeah, this is also interesting. All uh, the columns, as I said, uh, Kiva region and Horizon region is very famous yeah. for, uh, for its uh, carving on wood. And here you can see uh, these columns made of the uh, alum tree. Mm -hmm. Made uh, from elm tree by Kiva Craftsman. Yeah, just look at the ornaments, guys. It's so difficult to make it. I don't know how they make it. It took a long time. We will go to Harazm region, inshallah, and I'll show you guys how they are making it now. And you should show them also uh, Juma Mosque. Yes, yes. Friday Ju Mosque of with course. 230 yes, pillars yes. like this. Like this and they are all... just wow. And they are all from different uh, periods, you know, from yeah. different years. Right. Yeah. And um, here we can see uh -huh. uh, the metal work uh -huh. uh, from different also schools mm -hmm. like Tashkent, Kohan, and uh, Bukhara. Rasmus from Bukhara made okay. uh, this stuff. So, for example, this is an interesting kind this, of this one, uh -huh. yeah, thing. It's called Dastushui, which from Tajik or Persian language means uh, for washing hands, like uh -huh. kind of a sink. Uh -huh. uh, ancient sink and the people use it because uh, at the ancient time they didn't have the they didn't have the current water yeah. in the tap like nowadays yes. we do have it and they used to bring the water from outside from the wells or from havus yes uh, which is a pool yeah, yeah. Uh, so and they washed the hands uh, and then the water uh, was uh, going down to this uh, uh, like a collector, kind of right? Collector, yeah. yeah. And then they could open it uh -huh. and water the plants in their garden. For the, so, they, they reuse the water, yeah. yes, yes. They could reuse the water. Yeah. And the water usually uh, they brought in uh, a special water vessel, which is <laughs> called Oftoba, like Oftoba. this. Yes. So guys, Uzbekistan is uh, located in the center of uh, Central Asia, very arid place, uh, water was always a problem, even now, so from the ancient time we are um, trying to save the water, yep, until now. And okay guys, uh, what about here this? Here they present us some knives, wow. uh, you know, these kind of knives, uh, they are made in Chust. Chust again is a small ancient town mm. located in Fergana Valley, Namangan region. And uh, usually uh, they decorate uh, the knife handle yep. again, with some uh, stones. Yes, and guys, Chust knife also the brand of the Uzbekistan now. Wherever you go, they will say, they will try to sell you guys. They will tell you guys always, this is the Chust knife, just take it. Yeah, and here also you can see some uh, small knives. Okay. They were special women yeah. knives, wow. and the women used to wear uh -huh. it uh, inside the parangi. Inside the parangi. Yeah, to be on the safe side. Yes, see guys, they had a protection For before. For self protection. Yes, yes, yes. It's called like you know, uh, if you guys watch it, the Game of Thrones TV show. There is a Arya Stark, she has a needle, small, small, you know, uh, like needle-like weapon, so this is also the same. So this guys. Okay, this, way this is the way out. Okay, we are going out. Yep, we almost finished, right? Yep. We are in the courtyard, guys. Yeah, thank you very much for the beautiful, very interesting, uh, so rich with the information, this uh, excursion. So guys, um, what can I say? This is the Museum uh, of Applied Arts in Tashkent. 
It's uh, located in the Raketbosch street, uh, very close to the Kasmanathlar metro station. And just come here whenever you visit the Uzbekistan. Very beautiful, very interesting museum. Uzbek Tales recommends. Yep. So guys, at the end, what can I say? Just um, subscribe to our channel. Just hit the bell icon, thumbs up, any comments and just share this video for everyone thank you very much bye 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 bye